Hey folks, in today's video, I'm gonna share a solution to a problem, and this is one of my least favorite things about RV camping in a fifth wheel, and that is removing and installing the giant heavy fifth wheel hitch. Now y'all know these things can weigh on average over 150 pounds. I used to have a B&W Companion, and that thing I think was right around 225 pounds. This Kurt A25 is closer to 183 pounds, but that is still backbreaking and really just not safe to try to do on your own repetitively again and again and again. And it's something that I absolutely dread. You know, I'm not someone that lives in an RV full time. I just use my RV recreationally. And that means maybe once or twice a month at most. And I need full access to my truck bed during the week. And so that means anytime I wanna go camping, I've gotta take the giant heavy fifth wheel hitch and put it into my bed and then remove it at the end. And it's something that I really absolutely detest so much that a few years back, I actually got rid of the conventional Kingpin fifth wheel hitch completely and sold my BMW Companion and switched over to a Reese Goose Box, which is a different hitch that actually goes on your fifth wheel in place of the traditional Kingpin. And then all you have to do is insert a goose ball in the back of your bed. Now, I absolutely love the Reese Goose Box. I think it's still my favorite towing platform for a fifth wheel. In fact, I did a previous video, two year owner review, so I'll put a card up for that if you're interested in the Reese Goose Box. But that is not what this video is about. Now you might be wondering if this guy is such a big fan of the Reese Goose Box, then why is he trying to sell us on a solution to the problem of installing and removing a giant heavy fifth wheel hitch in the back of a truck bed? Well, a couple things have changed. So over the summer, I sold my fifth wheel and that was the one that had the Reese Goose Box on it. And so as I was looking at new fifth wheels to replace it, you know, manufacturers don't offer typically the Reese Goose Box as an option, at least that I'm aware of. And so typically they'll have a base pin box and then sometimes an upgraded pin box, just kind of depending on the price point. But the fifth wheel that I ended up settling on came with an upgraded pin box that was mandatory. In other words, it wasn't an option. And so I got to thinking, I thought, you know, I hate to take off this upgraded pin box that I paid extra for that I didn't have a choice, but I had to get it and then replace it with a Reese Goose box right away. And then I kind of wasted that money on the upgraded pin box that came with the fifth wheel. So I thought, you know what, maybe I'll give this upgraded pin box a second chance and try the conventional fifth wheel hitch again and just see what it's like since I've had the Reese Goose Box for over two years. Well, that brings us full circle back to where I started the videos I was describing how much I absolutely dread removing and installing the giant heavy fifth wheel hitch each time. And so I knew that I needed to come up with a solution that would alleviate that problem without breaking the bank. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It is right up here. Well, folks, this is my solution. It's kind of like a semi-portable electric hoist. This is a Warren pulls all that has a thousand pound pulling capacity and it is attached up here to a D-ring shackle. And then it goes to four separate axle straps that are then fastened to the trusses that support the ceiling and the floor deck above. Now I'll give you all the dimensions and go over the specific components that I used to create this, but I can only imagine you're probably on the edge of the couch right now just dying to see this thing in action. So let me demo it first. All right, so we disconnect the mounts for the puck system just like normal so the fifth wheel hitch is free to move and then we just squeeze the trigger on the pulls all. Show you just reverse what it looks like to reinstall it. We just change the direction of the pulls all and back down we go. And there you go, we're all installed again. See how easy that was? And if you're interested in another vantage point, here's a different angle. You can see it's got a forward and reverse selector right here. And so we're gonna put it into the forward with it facing up like that. And then all we do is squeeze the trigger. Well, in case you can't tell, this has been a game changer for me. I mean, this went from one of my most dreaded tasks to now it's no big deal with this pulls all. Let me give you some close-up shots and go over the individual components. So first up here, we've got an axle strap. This is a 36 inch axle strap. Now this is actually intended for maybe a car transporter that's transporting a car on a flatbed. And they would take this strap, go around the axle of the car and then use some straps to secure it so it doesn't move. But I'm actually using it here to pick up the weight 
of the fifth wheel hitch. You can see there it's going through the jaws of the fifth wheel hitch of the head there, and then it runs kind of through the head, and I've actually captured part of the base, the body of the fifth wheel hitch, and then it goes back up the other side to this hook. Now this swivel hook does come from worn with the pulls all, and it swivels, and then it goes all the way up, and there's another hook up here. This one comes with the pulls all as well. It doesn't swivel. It's attached to the cable, which goes into the spool here. And then up from there, I've got just a basic D-ring shackle. And then I've got four more 36-inch axle straps, you can see. And so I'm using that shackle to connect all four of those axle straps. And then each of the four axle straps runs to the ceiling, and you can see I've got another hook there with two separate lag screws. And those, of course, are going into the trusses that support the ceiling and the floor above. Now, what I like about this system is all the individual components are rated well over the weight of the fifth wheel hitch. You know, this Kurt A25 weighs about 183 pounds in total. Even if you had the B&W Companion, which I think on the Ram version is about 225 pounds, all these individual components are well over that. For instance, the axle straps, like I mentioned, over a thousand pounds. Then you've got the pulls all, again, a thousand pounds. Then you've got this D-ring shackle, and that's several thousand pounds. And then you've got each one of these individual axle straps up here, again, a thousand pounds each. Then the mounts going into the ceiling, those are rated at 600 pounds a piece for a combined capacity of 2,400 pounds among the four. I also like that there's redundancy. You know, it's not just one single anchor point to your ceiling. There's four separate anchor points here, and each of those separate points have two separate lag screws. And again, these are going into the trusses that support the ceiling and the floor above, so it's spreading that weight evenly among those trusses instead of having one single point of failure. Now, when I had installed this system, I had envisioned only using the pulls all to raise and lower the fifth wheel hitch, and then I'd probably store it off to the side against the wall here in the garage. But after using it a few times, I noticed that it actually clears the truck bed rails by a good bit. There's probably a good eight inches plus between the bottom of the fifth wheel hitch and the top of my truck bed rails. And so actually I've decided I'm just gonna leave it permanently suspended above the truck bed. And that way it just makes it even easier when I'm ready to install it. And on that note, let's just talk some basic safety considerations. So I don't know that Warren Design, this pulls all like a true hoist that has a break of some sort where it's designed to be stored with a load on it at all times. And so since I've decided to keep the fifth wheel hitch on the pulls all up here just for convenience, I did add this ratchet strap just for safety. And it goes to that same D-ring strap up there and then goes all the way around the fifth wheel hitch back onto the other side. And that's just for safety. You know, I've had it in this position, in this stored position for almost three months and it hasn't slipped or dropped, not even the slightest bit. So I think this is really just a good idea to have as a backup. That way, if something did fail here with the pulls all, then you've got this ratchet strap to make sure nothing bad happens. Now, a couple other safety considerations. Just like any live load, you don't wanna be standing aimlessly under it for no reason. And that includes kids playing underneath it. And so you wanna make sure that if you pull your truck out of the garage, that your kids or other people aren't walking or standing under this live load. Even though it seems really secure, you never know what could happen. And this thing could really do some serious damage and crush toes and feet. So even when I'm lower it into the truck bed you know I'm real conscientious of where my feet are that my feet are anywhere near where the base could come down if it were to come loose and crush something and so I'm very aware and alert of that I'm also watching fingers that they're not going to get pinched by something as it comes down and so just use common sense and follow all the safety guidelines in the manual there from Warren. For those interested in specific dimensions if you want to do something like this in your garage I'll just give you my measurements as a starting point so up here on the ceiling, on the distance, the spacing between these two hooks, that's largely gonna be based on and determined by the spacing of your trusses or joists in your garage. But here in my case, they're 24 inches apart, 24 inch on center. And so that worked out really good. I just did two trusses in a row. But if you're on 16 inch centers, you know maybe you wanna do 32, just a recommendation there. But that is the spacing there. Whatever you do, you definitely absolutely have to go into something solid. You can't use some kind of drywall anchor you know, and expect that to hold up with this kind of weight. So definitely go into something solid and make sure that those lag screws are in there really nice and tight. Then as far as the width here, so between these two sides, these two legs, I've got five feet. That's what I chose to do. And initially, 
I was thinking, you know, 36 inches, that's what these axle straps are here. And so I was thinking five feet, that'll give it a nice drop. Now I've got actually right here, a drop of just over two feet, two feet, two inches. I think if I could do it all over again, I probably would spread these out side to side and instead of doing five feet across here, I think I'd probably go for six feet. And I think that would raise this drop up so it's not quite as low, two feet. And that would give me even more height if I ever needed it to raise up the fifth wheel hinge since I'm storing it you know, permanently like that. So that's me that measurement there. Let me give you the distance from the bottom of the fifth wheel hitch. This is the lowest point right here, all the way up to the ceiling. And so that measurement is six feet, one inch. So just over six feet there. And that's from, again, the bottom of the fifth wheel hitch to the ceiling, how much space basically my apparatus takes up. And again, that's a 36 inch axle strap here, going up through the pulls all, the D-ring, and then four more 36 inch axle strap. So that gives you an idea that all takes up about six feet when the pulls all is fully retracted in here. So again, I think if I spread my hooks at the top, I probably could get that up and save another, you know, six to eight inches if I had to. Now these last measurements are gonna be the overall height of my garage and then also the clearance between the truck and the fifth wheel hitch when it's in this stored position. So right here, we've got the top of my bed rails and my tonu cover. So when I roll out that tonu cover, this is where it falls right on top of here. And so if we go up to the ceiling now, we're looking at six feet and we'll just say six inches. So if you remember when I did the measurement from the bottom of the fifth wheel hitch here, it was six feet, one inch roughly, I believe. And so that tells us we've got about five inches of clearance between the bottom most point of the fifth wheel hitch here and then the top of the tonu cover. So only about five inches. And that's why, again, I think if I did it all over again, I try to get that up just a little bit higher by spreading out those anchor points. Let me also give you the height of my bed rails from the ground. And so right here, we're gonna be shooting to the ground and we're looking at almost five feet. So four feet, 11, seven sixteenths of an inch. And then let me also give you the overall ceiling height. So we'll go down here to the floor and we're looking at 11 feet, four inches. So I think if you're under 11 feet, it's gonna be awfully close. You're gonna to have to get creative and try to make all those connections a lot tighter so that you can get a little bit more clearance to get it up above your truck bed. And that's of course, if you wanna store it in that position. But as long as you're 11 feet, four inches and, and higher, maybe you've got a 12 foot ceiling, I think you'll have plenty of room to pull off something similar to what I did. All right, I know you're dying to see it one more time. So here's yet another angle going up. Well, that concludes our video for today. If you're interested in purchasing any of the products that I featured in today's video, I will include links in the description below for convenience. Note those are affiliate links. They don't cost you anything to use, but they do help support the channel. So thank you sincerely for using them in advance. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback below. So drop me a note. And as always, thanks for watching.